Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I'm uh, sitting at my slightly messy desk. It's a little cluttered. I've been working on knocking out some items off my very long-running to-do list. And one of those is power distribution here at the desk. Now, six years ago, yeah, it's been six years, um, I sold my house in Fort Wayne and bought this RV. And I had about a month and a half to clear everything out of the house and to build up this RV and repair, repair it, because it was used, it needed a lot of work, um, and build my desk and, and get ready to go. Uh, so I was kind of rushed. So uh, some things were kind of just thrown together. Uh, and I didn't really know how things were going to work out, what I was going to be doing realistically, you know. I mean, I had an idea. But I really didn't know the logistics of everything until I hit the road. Um, one of the things I that I cobbled together was power distribution here at the desk for the little radios and things that I run here. Um, let me show you what I did, and it's not pretty. So this is the mess I'm going to replace. I have one of these old automotive style uh, cigarette lighter adapter things with three plugs. The middle one failed almost right away. This one's using a USB charger for my cell phone, which is noisy on RF. Uh, this goes to the amplifier here, the MXP50. Um, there's some Binding post under here, connected to that, is power leads for the FT817, for my LDG tuner, and for my ICOM 705. So, that's the junk that's getting replaced. And it's, this, this thing's janky, and it's, it's terrible. Uh, watch, the, uh, watch the power light on the amp. Great, when I want it to fail, there it goes. <laughs> yeah, it's... This thing's horrible. So, yeah, the... Uh, Power block is going to go right here. The wire is going to go through this wall and up because right up here, up in this area, up in here is my power buses for the desk. So that's what's that's what we're replacing that mess. Yeah, so it was cobbled together. You know, I'm certainly not proud of it, but it worked. It, it's functioned for the last uh, six years, sort of. You know, but now I'm converting everything to power poles, uh, and so I wanted a power poles distribution block for power at the desk, make it cleaner, neater, nicer. So I went looking online, and um, I wanted something with the USB charger as well, because I run my phone and tablet off of it. And PowerWorks has a really nice little box. It's a you know, metal box. Uh, each power pole's outlet is fused. It has five, which is what I wanted, five. And a couple of USB ports, but 90 bucks? <laughs> it's nicely made. It's in a metal box. You know, it's, it's, you're, you're buying a quality piece of hardware, sure. That's out of my budget for little projects like that here at the desk. So I've got a 3D printer. Let's make one. So the first thing that I did was headed to Amazon to look for some parts that I would need. One being the USB charger. I found this nice little panel mount USB charger for 10 bucks that takes 12 volts in, so that's easy. Uh, then I needed a fuse holder for an automotive style fuse. Ah, here we go. UXL 10 pieces panel mount fuse holders for 11 bucks. Okay, sure, I'll use the other uh, nine in other projects down the road. That's great. And then finally, I needed some toroids, uh, type uh, T85-43, type 43, which is a good mix for 20 to 200 megahertz. And uh, the reason for that will become apparent. So I had my parts, and uh, then I went ahead and started to design the uh, device. I had imagined what I wanted, five power poles, ports, USB charger, fuse. So I sketched it all out, and then I hopped into my favorite quick and dirty easy modeler, Tinkercad, and I modeled up the design, and this is what I came up with. So after that, we had to print out the first prototype, and the 3D printer churned away for about five hours to spit out this first prototype. And then I fit all the parts on it to see if they fit, and they did. And uh, I didn't like a couple of things, like the shape of the bottom where the USB uh, sits. I wanted that, wanted that to match the contour of the USB. And there were a couple other errors in the model, so I went into it again and uh, did prototype number two. And this fit a lot better. Everything looks good. I like it. Um, I think this is pretty close to the final design. I just had a few little tweaks to do. And then I printed out prototype number three, and I had a winner. I really like this. This is, this is looking good. This is just about exactly what I needed. 
So, uh, now that I had the prototype uh, that I liked, let's wire it up. Now you might remember those toroids that I uh, bought. What are they for? Well, I mentioned that the uh, USB charger in the old one was a little noisy on RF, so I wanted to build a filter board, which is what I built here. Uh, this will go in that void behind the USB charger to filter out any hash noise coming from its uh, 12 to 5 volt converter and any USB devices plugged into it. This is the schematic of it. It's a very simple design. Uh, it's a common mode choke with a capacitor on each end. And one is uh, 0 0.001 microfarads, which should help to eliminate VHF um, noise. And the other is a 0 0.01 microfarad, which should go downwards uh, into the HF spectrum as far as what it's going to eliminate. So I'm in the process of wiring it up. Uh, I've got it partly done. Uh, and the filter board tucks right in here real nice. And you gotta you gotta watch polarity, of course. You know, red I, red is positive. That's why I used red and white wire on here so I could follow it straight through. Um, the fuse, I've got a blade connector and a bus wire that runs down here for each of the positive sides. I've wrapped the wire there. On the negative, which I was getting ready to do here, here's the incoming power line. Okay, I've got a blade connector here that's going to connect to that side of the fuse. And I've prepared this side as a bus that's going to run down there, and all these are going to connect to it. And in my case, the power wire is going to be coming right out of the back of the thing through a hole in the wall that's behind where this is mounted. Uh, but many people are going to want to run the wire from this thing along the wall. So up at this end, I'll show you in the prototype here. If I can let's see, I'll zoom in. Hopefully my servo focus is working. Yeah. I have a breakout that I've engineered in right here. So you can just uh, take your nippers and nip that and nip that and just break this little piece out here. Like so. And now you have an exit channel for the wires right there. So that's one of the features of this design. Um, other people are going to say, oh, gee, Kevin, oh, you got those bare wires right there, right next to each other. That's that's the recipe for disaster. Uh, no, this piece here goes right in like that into these grooves, just like that. And it separates and isolates those and it's flush with the back so that when this is mounted on the wall, this also braces the power poles so you can't push them through when you plug something in. And being connected to each other like this, they stabilize themselves too. That, that keeps, them, uh, keeps them in place as well as the nubs, the plastic nubs that they snap into. So I think it's going to be a good and safe and solid design. Okay, I'm going to get this wired up and then I can start my installation. Well, there it is. That certainly looks a lot better than the old stuff, doesn't it? So I've got three things plugged into it, my ICOM, the LDG tuner, and my amplifier, which leaves me with two ports. I've got these little covers that I put on them, keep the dust out of them in case uh, it's, a des it's the desert. There's dust is everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, I can just uh, take like my Yezu, plug it in when I want to use it. There we go. Ta-da! Um, Unplug that, put the cover back on until I need it. There we go. And my cell phone's charging off it. So that's the installation. It works. It's great. I'm much happier with this than with the old stuff. Before, after. Yep, much better. So there you go. Now I have a nice, neat, clean solution for power here at the desk. I like it. I'm happy with the result. Uh, as usual, the model files are up on Thingiverse. I'll uh, link that down in the description below. Um, they're free. You can build one of your, of your own if you want. The uh, USB charger and the fuse holder I bought off Amazon. I think I mentioned that earlier. I might have, might not have. Um, but I'll put also put links to those down in the description below so you can buy those parts if you want to. Um, the uh, filter board is optional. It should be removing a lot of hash noise. I haven't done an A to B comparison without 
uh, without it. I still get just a little bit of noise on the radio um, with the new USB uh, charger that's built into that thing. Um, it's not too bad, but it's there. I might redo the filter board in the future. I'm not sure, uh, but it's it it definitely helps. I'm sure because these things usually put out a lot of noise, and I'm not getting that much. Uh, other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with it. So um, there you go. A, a cheap Anderson Power Poles uh, power distribution block you can build yourself. If there's interest in a version without the USB um, block. I can rework the model and put up just the five US or five power pole port version. So let me know in the comments if you'd prefer that, and it, it wouldn't be any trouble to do. So anyway, um, I hope you found that interesting, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos, and if you'd like to help support this channel please click to support me on my Patreon page.